let's talk about Security Manager. As mentioned here in this document that we're sharing, in this particular session we're going to focus on the ins and outs of the Bull Chart Security Manager and the trove of information that it includes. And it addresses things like which stocks are in each index, which stocks are in what sector, and it, it addresses the question, the sector index doesn't include all stocks in the sector. And that's something that some people are not aware of. So we'll talk about that. Uh, it's a little bit confusing at first, but we'll explain that. How to find all of the indexes on our market? We'll answer that question. And how to find a list of ETFs on the Aussie market? Now, as I mentioned a minute ago, there are two ebook PDF articles that I've prepared. Uh, these started some years ago, one on control panel in bull charts and one on security manager. And feel free to download those and have a look. Here's a quick look at what they are. The first one of those titled BC, I'll just highlight that, BC 04000. That's four pages long and it, it's a, basically a PDF file that explains the control panel the key features in the control panel and over the page talks about how to display and hide it and we'll cover that shortly. It also talks about the appearance, the location and size of the control panel and how you can adjust that and fine tune it. It talks about the control panel tabs, the six tabs across the bottom of the security manager, the control panel and how to resequence them. Uh, and there's a setting inside Bull Charts Preferences that you can turn on or off to remember some of the settings during your Bull Chart session. But another feature that's not well known is the Auto Hide feature for the control panel. And that's a little bit obscure until you actually see it demonstrated. And what you can do is make it so that the security manager automatically hides to the side of the window and pops out. And when that's enabled, the collapsed security manager looks like this vertical thing to the right of the window. Uh, so it takes up less space. We'll demonstrate that. And closing the control panel. The second PDF document there about, which is headed security manager, is six pages long and goes into a little bit more detail. Uh, that's a newer one and that summarizes a lot of the things that we'll talk about tonight, including the key features and aspects of Security Manager. Scrolling down here, just to have a quick look at what's in this document. Uh, there's a description about the All Securities section of the Security Manager, the Index Composition section, scrolling down further, the Industry Groups and the, the trove of information that's in there, uh, Security Types, there are four security types currently, Watch Lists, a description of, of some of the features in here, including watch list folders. If you're doing things with bull charts and wanting to record lots of information, you might find watch list folders useful. We'll also talk about sorting the lists, sorting the stocks within a watch list and the watch lists themselves. And this, this as demonstrated here, is colouring of items in each watch list and sorting the watch list by colour. Uh, we'll briefly touch on that. Uh, common watch lists, for those who are starting out with bull charts, you might be wondering uh, what can I use the watch lists for? And listed here in this document are a couple of the more common uses for watch lists and a couple more ideas uh, about favourite indexes and also stocks by sector. Now there's a whole lot more possibilities uh, and a lot of users use the watch lists for a whole lot of different things. Uh, then there's a description here about the other section in Security Manager. Uh, and this is a feature that's been in bull charts uh, only for the last year or so. If you've managed to download, install other databases, then this is where they appear inside Security Manager. And here in this sample I've got COM, 
as one of the databases under the other heading. And COM is the commodities database, currently with 26 entries in it as listed there. And you can see that that includes oil, gold, silver, uh, cobalt, uh, and a whole lot of others, uh, including lead and iron ore. Now, a year or two ago, a number of us were talking about the price of iron ore and how we had trouble finding an index for iron ore so we could see the iron ore price. That's included in that list. That's a, an optional extra database. The index database is another database that can be installed there, the NASDAQ database, the M Fund, plus a couple of others. Now, for those of you who already have bull charts, if you wanted to find those databases and download them, then all you've got to do is go to the Bull Charts website at bullcharts.com.au or it redirects to bullsystems.com. Scroll down to the link towards the bottom, Updates and Downloads. And what you'll need to do here is type in your Bull Charts username that is used for your data access and downloads each day log in there and then on the downloads page you'll see as you scroll down a number of items here under the heading data tools. So the ASX data tool, the MFUND data tool, intraday data, global indices, American Stock Exchange, Commodities, NASDAQ, New York, Toronto. So those are all downloads and you can click on any of those executables to download that database and install it. How to manage those is another question, and we can address that another time. Back to this document, uh, Portfolios is another heading in Security Manager, which some people use, uh, and that's about all. That's six pages. So they're the two handouts that I've made available for those who want to uh, have a look at them and maybe download them and perhaps print them. Uh, what I should do now is switch across to Bull Charts. In the, in the minutes of the meeting from last week, the Melbourne meeting, I included on page two of that document and in the agenda for the session, this screenshot of Security Manager with some clues to help people get started in case they've not used bull charts much at all yet or, or maybe still looking at bull charts and haven't purchased a license yet. That's okay. And there are several sections that can all be collapsed. And this whole grouping, all of this, is, is a hierarchy of information. And we'll go through each of the major headings and explain briefly what's in there and the difference between them and work our way down the list. The first one at the top is index composition. We'll talk about that. So that's what stocks are in which index. Then we'll talk about the industry groups section, which is more about sectors. And that's the GICS, the Global Industry Classification System sectors. There are 11 of them. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the security types heading a bit further down, which is a list of the indexes on our market and all of the ordinary stocks and unit trusts and ETFs. Further down below that again is where you can create your own watch lists and watch list folders. And then further down the list not shown there is what's shown to the left, lower left here, and that is the other indexes. Uh, and then across the bottom of the screen, there are six tabs. Now, that whole thing that we're looking at in bull charts, we're calling it the security manager, uh, but it's also really the control panel. So let's have a look at bull charts again. Now, on the right-hand side of my window there, I'm showing you the security manager. And what I can do is I can grab the, the top of it and drag it away from the edge of the window and undock it. So it's now floating. And I can drag it around, I can expand it sideways, I can expand the lower panel. That's the security manager. Now, across the bottom of this window, there are six tabs, as I mentioned before. Securities is the first one. And these might be in a different sequence to yours because you can grab one of these tabs and resequence the tab to another location. So all of the commonly used ones you can drag across to the left and so that they're easier to get to, shorter mouse movement. Uh, so I've got securities first, 
then I've got scans, then I've got quick search, I've then got the layer manager, then there's workspace manager, and the last one is the alert manager. So those are the six tabs. Now this whole panel is what we refer to as the control panel. If you go to the bull charts menu, view panels, there's control panel on the list and it says the function key F8 is the function key you can press to display and hide. Toggle on and off the control panel. If you use function key F6, you'll go straight to security manager. Uh, otherwise, the other options inside the control panel, as I've just shown, are ball scan, manager alert summary, uh, workspace layers and quick search. So they're all available from this menu, view panels, as well as function key to pull up two of them. If I now tap, say, function key F6 on my keyboard, the control panel will go. If I tap function key F6 again, then the security manager is displayed. So that's the control panel that contains security manager and the other managers. I can dock it back to the right hand side of the window by dragging it across a bit more than halfway off the screen and then it grabs and locks. Now if you'd rather have it to the left, you can drag it to the left and dock it there. That's, that's okay as well. The other thing that I mentioned earlier that is not so obvious is if you have a look near the top right corner of the panel, there's that little push pin. Now if you push the push pin, if you click on that, Security Manager will hide out off the right hand side of the screen. And what you'll be able to see is just a small version of the six tabs. And then if you wanted to open up the Securities Manager, all you've got to do is hover the mouse over that and it pops out. Take the mouse away and it hides. If you want the Scan Manager or the Layer Manager, uh, then same thing, just hover over that particular item on that toolbar and it pops out, take the mouse goes away and it hides again. So if you like your screen space and like to have things in view and have this auto hide, you can do that. To make the Security Manager control panel stay there again, open it up and click on that little push pin and it'll stay there in place. So there's a little bit of information about the control panel itself, how to display, hide it, and auto hide it. Let's have a quick look at the first item in the security manager, that's all securities. Now I mentioned before that the first item there is the index composition. If you select an item like the All Australian 50, then in the bottom portion of the panel it shows you the currently 49, I'll just highlight that, 40. 49 entries. <clears throat> so even though it's the All Australian 50, there's actually 49 there currently. And it's then easy to click on one of those items, the first stock in the list or, or whatever the entry is, pause, wait for the price chart to pop up, <clears throat> and there's the price chart, and then step through all of the items in that list. Now, I've got an old machine here, it's about seven years old, so this process now takes a few seconds, three or four or five seconds, to display the chart. I can automatically step through this list. Near the top of this window, there is a button that I can press that actually starts the slideshow. So I can flip through securities in this group. Now, if, if it's Stepping too quickly through the group, I can slow it down by clicking on the minus button a couple of times, let it catch up, <coughs> and if it's going too slow, I can click on the plus button to speed it up. Another way to start and stop that is to simply tap the space bar on the keyboard. So tapping the space bar will stop that process and will start it again. So that's another possibility. Now, this index composition section of, of the Security Manager also includes the S&P ASX 200 stocks. That's the XJO. Now, according to this display at the moment, there are, at the bottom it says there are 187 securities in the index. We had a rebalance of the index uh, a week and a half ago, Monday last week. 
Uh, hopefully now this listing is correct. Sometimes there's a glitch and it's not updated uh, promptly. But if we expand this entry, what we can see then is a list of all of the sectors, sectors and the stocks within that sector that are within the XJO index. Now we'll note here that if we look, for instance, at the telecoms services stocks, there's six. Six stocks currently in the telecom services sector. Now that's they make up the sector index, but some of you might know that across the whole of the market, we've got a lot more than just six telecom stocks. And we'll get back to that in just a moment and explain the discrepancy. Uh, so for anyone looking to uh, focus on uh, a stock universe, as we talked about a, a few months ago, a stock universe of maybe large cap or mid cap stocks or small cap stocks, uh, the small odds, or maybe the, the ASX20, the XTL index, there's lists of those stocks within each index here in this index composition category. Let's have a look at this industry groups section in the security manager. Now, there are listed here the 11 official sectors, JIC sectors, plus uh, another grouping here called classification pending. And if we have a look at telecom services stocks, you'll see in the list at the bottom of the panel here, there's actually 26 stocks that are t regarded as telecom stocks in the telecom sector. Now, why are there 26 here, but up here under index composition, we've only got six. The key difference is that in this particular grouping, these are the stocks out of the XJO index, and there's only 200 to choose from. So we've got six telecom stocks in the XJO, is what this list tells us. And further down, under industry groups, in the telecom services sector, this is telling us that across the whole of the market, we've actually got 26 telecom stocks. Now, you might wonder, okay, so the sector index, which stocks are in that index and how can I see that index? And we'll get to that in just a moment because that's a bit further down. Uh, but the key point here is that this industry groups grouping here is all of those official market sectors and the stocks across our whole of the market that are in that sector. If we move on to the security types grouping here and have a look at the indices subheading, this is a list of all of the indexes and if you like sub-indexes on our market, currently 39 of them. We can list, we can sort this list by symbol as it is currently, or we can click on the name header to sort this list by name. Now when we sort it by name, then it's more apparent that we've got the S&P ASX 200 entries listed here. Now I'll skip over the first couple, go down to consumer discretionary, there's the XDJ sector index. So XDJ is the sector index, that the symbol is XDJ. That chart is the XDJ index. And if we zoom out a bit and have a look back in time, and this is a daily chart, so there's a lot of data there, and I'll keep zooming out. You'll notice that it only started back in 2001. There's no data going back any further because the XJO and this arrangement was introduced back then. It doesn't go back any further. But listed here under XDJ are the other sector sub-indexes out of the XJO. So the telecoms one is down here, it's the XTJ, and there's the XTJ index. On, at a glance, the first thing you notice here is the uh, significant downtrend. Uh, if I just put the bull charts trend ruler on that, uh, we can see that it's down about 47% over that 900 odd so 663 bars or thereabouts. Um, so anyone who's been following that sector index or the stocks in that sector, you might very well understand or know that that's been happening. I'll give you a quick tip as well. These sector indexes in the XTJ, have a look at the 
stock code um, that applies to most of them, but not all. The XFJ, for most of these XJO sector it subindexes, the first letter is an X, the, second, the last letter is a J, and the middle letter, F for financials, uh, XHJ is healthcare, N is the industrials, IJ is info, infotech, materials is MJ, uh, real estate is R, RE, not RJ, um, XJ is different, that's an exception as well, XTJ, telecoms and utilities XUJ, so most of them are X something J, and that middle letter is often easy to, uh, to guess. Let's quick look at the indices entry under security types. Let's have a quick look at the next item under security types and that's ordinaries and note that we've got at the bottom here 2,000 odd securities, 2,000 and uh, the first few symbols don't have a name but there's a whole lot of entries there, 2,000 entries. That's a lot of most of the securities on our market, not the indexes, not the unit trusts and not the ETFs but most of the stocks. Uh, the next entry here under security types is unit trusts and we can see there are currently 82 listed there, sorted by symbol or sort by name and under the ETFs heading there's 146 and you can sort that in alphabetical order ascending or descending just by clicking on that column header. So there's a quick snapshot of the four entries under security types. And we'll have a look at other. As I mentioned before briefly, under that other heading, heading, that is where we see a list of any of the optional additional databases we might have downloaded from the Bull Charts website and installed. On this machine now, I've only got one. That's that index one. If I go back to the document that we shared earlier, and this is our minutes from last week's meeting and have a look. I'll just zoom in a bit so we can see what's listed here. Uh, from another machine I've taken this screenshot which shows that, um, here's the screenshot down here. Under the other heading, under other, we've got three entries here, COM, INDEX and M fund. And as I mentioned uh, before, and showed on the Bull Charts website, you can download a number of others in addition to those ones. So that's where they appear when you do that, under that other heading. Uh, portfolios is where you can create and manage your own portfolio. Uh, we won't cover that one tonight, that's uh, another topic on its own. Let's spend the next couple of minutes and talk about watch lists. And I will admit that I've gone berserk here and not tidied up my watch lists uh, for a long time. I'm a bit of a messy hoarder. The first entry here is called last scan results. Now those of you who have been using bull charts for a while and running scans will probably know that every time you run a scan bull charts will automatically create this watch list called last scan results and the next time you run a, any sort of scan bull charts will overwrite this particular watch list and replace it with a new one. And you can see in the bottom portion of this panel that the last time I ran a scan here, I ended up with 82 securities being selected. Uh, it shows that down the bottom here. So we're looking at last scan results. So the last scan I ran, I, I found 82 stocks and that's a list of them. Now, if you do that and you want to keep that watch list, right click on that entry wait for the drop down menu, on my poor laptop it takes a moment, and there, is a, there are a number of items here, a number of options, one is to rename, so I can rename that to anything else, temp watch list, and then the next time you run a scan, bull charts will create a new last scan results watch list and temp watch list will still be there. The next thing you'll notice here are I've got some folders, and in these folders, in some of them I've got more folders uh, as well as watch lists. <coughs> uh, 
and I've got folders in folders. So I'm keeping some of the old things that I've I've created over time. So it's easy to do that, and I've not yet found a limit to how many of those you can have. Uh, you can have quite a lot. And note that in a couple of these, I've got dollar symbols in the start of the name. Now, that does not mean they're money makers. All that the dollar symbol means is that in the, in the ASCII sort sequence, when computer systems sort lists of things, it will sort in alphabetic order. Now, if you've got a dollar symbol like this in the name, dollar symbols come before alphabetic characters. The other thing that comes before alphabetic characters are numeric characters. So special symbols like dollar symbol come first, then digits, numeric digits like 1 to 9 and 0, then alphabetic. So by specially including characters like that in names like this, bull charts will sort the list automatically for you. It won't sort it immediately, but once you close bull charts and open again, it'll pop them into sorted order. And in that order, uh, they're, they're there. You can't change that. The other thing that we'll note as we go down here further is that some of those watch lists might have, and I think I created one last week, uh, and it might have a number of stocks in the watch list with colors allocated to the entry. Now, it's easy to allocate a color to an entry in a watch list. You can either right click on an entry and from the drop down menu choose select color and there are a number of colors. Notice that in this drop down list, as well as the color, gold and, and purpley and gray, there's some text in there that says control plus two or control plus three. What that means is if you don't want to do right click and choose color from the, the drop down menu, you can simply indicate, click on one of the entries in the list, and then on your keyboard, hold down the control key and tap the number. And it might be one of the numbers from two to six. Now that's the numeric number, the top row of keys across the keyboard, not the numeric keypad. That won't work. I can tap control five, and our key mirror goes to that orangey color. I can tap control four, and it changes to the gray color. Control three, and it's purple. Control two, and it's the olivey green like the others. Control one, and it's no color allocated. And then what you can do with this list, apart from sorting by symbol or name, you can right click on the list and sort by color. Very bottom option here is on the drop down, sort order by color. And the fourth option there as well is sort by comment. So I can sort by color. So, so if I've got a number of stocks in my watch list and I think some of them are potential buys, I can allocate them a color, which might be high on the list, control two, and then sort the list. Now, the other option there was sort by comment. So there's this comment column over on the right hand side. And we can type comments in here, which could be the ex-dividend date, if you want to maintain that, or a brief comment about what it is or whatever. And that comment gets allocated to that stock in that watch list. Now, another way to maintain comments for a stock is to open up the memo. Now, we can do that from the bull charts menu, item view show chart memo or control M. That opens up this panel at the bottom of the screen and in here you can type any sort of text that you like. I'm just typing garbage for now because it's faster. If you've bought this stock you can type in the details about your purchase, why you purchased or the date and price or whatever else and maintain that in the chart memo field. Now control M will hide that memo and then redisplay it again. So that's an option. Now that text will get saved against that stock regardless of the watch list that's in. Whereas in the watch list over on the right, whatever item, whatever text is in the comment column, that's stored against that stock in this watch list only, not all watch lists. So there's a key difference there, something to be careful about. So there's a quick look at watch lists and watch list folders 
in that part of the security manager.